Thanks, Greg, and uh, thanks, Wired, for having me today. I'm really excited. Um, so I'm here to talk about the evolution of the AI ecosystem, but um, one of the things that I've realized um, working in the technology industry is that we all think about ecosystem and we all talk about ecosystem, but we all have a very different definition of what ecosystem is. I've never seen a single, a single um, a definition of a technology ecosystem, which is accurate. Um, so before I dive into the evolution of the AI ecosystem, I wanted to make a parallel with another technology that we all use, we all know, um, and how um, their, uh, its ecosystem has evolved. And that technology is the TV. Um, so the TV back in the 50s was black and white, transistorized TV. Um, at the time in the UK's early 50s, you're only, you had only one channel and the second one appeared um, in the mid 50s. And um, at that time, only 350,000 households in the UK had access um, to TV. It was highly regulated hours. You could only watch TV for a couple of um, um, hours per day. And there were only very, very few program um, at that time. Then when we moved into the 60s, we went into color transmission. And that's when um, the golden age of TV or mainstream TV started. It took us uh, quite a while to bring us um, where um, we are now, which is the age of uh, smart TV. So today, 27 million households in the UK have access to TV. Um, we have access to hundreds of channels, even foreign channels, and uh, the TV run 24-7 without interruption. So how did we actually get from transistorized TV to the age of smart TV? Well, it's pretty easy. It's, pretty, it's thanks to um, the TV ecosystem evolving. We've made advancements in terms of platforms so the technology on which tv on which the tv is built has evolved which is now allowing us to have smart and connected 4K TV. We've also made advancements in what I call fuel. And the fuel for the TV is actually the content. Hundreds of channels, even millions of movies, access to streaming platforms. We've also made, we've also made advancements from a tools perspective. Um, the tools have evolved. I can plug in a, a smart box in, into my TV and all of a sudden I get access to, to internet on my TV. Um, Accessibility has also um, uh, improved. Um, that's how we went from 350,000 households to 27 million. I can buy a TV right now and get it delivered um, tomorrow. Last but not least, we've also made improvements in terms of experiences. And um, um, the TV now is a hub for playing video games, um, watching movies in Blu-rays, um, but do, that's actually how we got there um, within those um, um, 70 years. And um, um, the reason why it's called an ecosystem is because one without the other wouldn't deliver the TV experience that we know um, um, of today. For it to work, they must evolve all together. Um, so what about the AI ecosystem? It's actually a similar story and it's still constantly evolving. Um, if, you walk in, if you walk into the industry and talk to people, you'll find people who have been in the who say they've been in AI for decades they're actually not lying because AI it's not new um, the first um, the first person to use the term AI was um, John McCarthy in the 50s he invented the lips programming and uh, that triggered a um, frenzy in terms of research to go and try to figure out how we could make computer think like humans. Um, AI went through a couple of winters. Um, and the reason why it went through winters is because while the research was advancing, um, we didn't have computational platforms um, um, who had enough computational power to be able to support the complex workloads that these researchers were coming from with coming coming up with um so in the in the 90s there was a renewed interest for ai when deep blue bit kasparov at chess and um we've really seen the boom of ai with the boom of data in the 2010s in the 2010s there are three things that happened we um, um, there was an abundance of data, so we figured out that data could be used to drive valuable insights for business secondly we've made advancements in terms of um, neural networks and algorithms, um, such as convolutional neural network uh, with AlexNet in 2012. And we've also realized that GPUs, graphics cards, could, do, could actually be used 
for um, um, artificial intelligence. And that's what created that boom um, in AI and started 2015. Most of major tech corporations have invested um, in AI. And that's when we saw the apparition of startups who were highly specialized in AI. I actually personally got in AI um, during that 2015 boom and I've been um, in there since. But um, all this created the world of AI that we um, like we um, um, know it today. And today is actually the age of autonomous. AI is impacting every segment, impacting, it can impact farming, automating food production, um, and um, uh, ban um, banking, autonomous driving, um, smart, uh, smart factories, and it's actually revolutionizing our society. But how did we get there? It's actually the same story as TV as the TV ecosystem. We've made advancements from a platform's perspective. Now we have um, we have chips that can process really complex AI workload. We've also made advancements from a fuel perspective. The fuel for AI is actually data, and we have more and more data um, 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 available today to build solutions which can answer um, uh, specific challenges. We've also made improvements from a tools perspective we have um, made massive improvements of software, software that can even write itself today. We've made improvements as well from an accessibility perspective. I can order, um, I can order a development kit online and get started um, with building a simple AI um, um, solution today. And last but not least, we've made um, improvements and advancements from um, the exp from an experiences point of view. Um, so the key to get here um, has really been for the entire ecosystem to work together and improve at the same time. Uh, my, my job wouldn't be the same if one of these components was actually missing from the picture. And what this has um, delivered to us is actually um, um, advancements to try to solve real world um, challenges. When COVID-19 um, shook the world, it unleashed the whole, the entire developer community to contribute, um, helping detect, mitigate, monitor, monitor and prevent the impact of the virus on on um, on our society i have here a few example a few application example but Really, it has been everywhere. Um, we've we've seen online developer competitions, industry partnering with researchers to give them the tools to sequence the COVID genome, um, students building autonomous robots to help um, front workers, key key workers, um, um, to help key workers in hospital. The entire ecosystem has been put put to work for the greater good and has found new ways to apply AI and, um, and to help us, um, all of us, um, fight against this pandemic. So what about the future of AI ecosystem? Um, when I get asked the question, I actually look at it from three different standpoints. The first one is the future of technology and technology advancements. Technology, AI technology is continuously improving and it's moving so fast. But if there is one trend I could leave you with today would be um, the, the move towards real time, real time AI. Um, for example, in this world where we're all in um, video conference, um, I can be talking in English right now and you could hear me in French with real-time translation, for example. Or I can have a very low bandwidth for my camera and you can um, um, see me in a very high quality. So that would be real-time super resolution. So the move towards real-time is becoming um, um, a major trend in AI. The second way I look at it is where the innovation will happen. Over the past... Um, years have been really looking at um, applied AI coming from emerging markets and how um, innovators and developers in emerging markets such as Latin America, Africa, were looking, were finding new ways or different ways to apply the technology that we, we were building um, to solve different type of challenges. So within the next 10 years, I think we're going to see even more um, uh, innovation coming from this applied AI space. And those two trends actually tie into a third one, which is the future of AI will be invisible. It is actually to a certain extent because the our device which is processing the most AI workloads today is actually our mobile phone. But, and, uh, but a lot of people actually um, don't know that fact and um, they don't know because it has become totally invisible. It has become totally invisible and um, um, 
um, because sometimes we get often, often we get too excited about uh, technology. There is one thing we tend to forget is that um, the essence of technology is to improve our experiences, our businesses and our lives. Um, so I often get um, asked, um, well, now that we've made advancements in natural language processing and conversational AI, do you think that the keyboards will disappear? Well, actually, no. Um, it's um, um, NLP has helped us find new ways to interact with our screens, but that has not replaced um, our keyboard. Um, so AI is going to be here, but it's going to be invisible, um, and it's going to be to it's going to continue to improve um, our lives and our experiences and our business. There is one game that I um, played this weekend uh, with my family and my non-tech um, entourage. I often asked, I, um, I asked them um, how they thought that AI or technology could improve their lives um, or businesses in the future. Um, and my mom, who is a chef, gave me um, um, a simple answer. She said, well, if I could get technology and AI to automate some of, some of the tasks like inventory, ordering food, um, um, sorting uh, my ingredients, I could focus on what's core to my job, which is actually the cuisine. I asked a similar question to my sister, who is a, um, um, a medicine student, student, and her response was around um, finding a way to help patients with diseases um, requiring long-term treatment, like diabetes, for example, improve the way um, uh, it's being uh, it's being done and their treatments are being administrated. So, to close on that um, topic today, I would love to ask you the question: How do you think AI can improve um, your business and your life in the future. Think about it and uh, let's continue that uh, conversation.